I'm Keith R.A. DeCandido, and welcome to Crad COVID Readings. Here, to reading my writing to make the pandemic palatable. This huge-ass book was released in 2009 in honor of the 25th anniversary of the game Battletech. Uh, subtitled 25 Years of Art and Fiction, it is a huge book that contains a whole mess of art and fiction. Um... It, uh, celebrating the anniversary of this game, which, uh, uh, is now 36 years old, as, as I read this. Um, and, uh, in honor of it, uh, the, the editors, uh, uh, Lord, Lauren Coleman and Jordan Weissman, uh, went to a whole bunch of different authors, uh, including, uh, myself, Ilse J. Bick, uh, who else is in this? Hang on. Um, Randall and Bills, uh, Kevin Kiliani, William H. Keith Jr., Victor Milan, um, Michael, Michael Stackpole, Phaedra Weldon, um, uh, a whole lot of people, really, uh, really cool writers who, uh, all contributed stories to this. Uh, this was my second Battletech story. The first one was called Mayo, which I read in another Crad COVID reading. And, uh, this one takes place, uh, on a world known as Gibson in this, uh, 31st century adventure. Um, and, uh, the, in addition to this lovely piece of artwork, uh, at the front, there's also a little bit of, uh, stats of Gibson, which I did not write. Uh, one of the games, game designers wrote that. Uh, it provides various statistics about Gibson, plus this little piece of information. One of the most extensively terraformed worlds beyond the Terran system, Gibson was engineered to be as human-friendly as possible. From a world that was originally 80% dry land, the Ryan Ice Cartel almost tripled the water coverage. The advertising campaign touting Gibson's newly arable land drew many cultural groups from Terra and beyond. The process accelerated when Gibson became known as a culturally tolerant world of free thinkers. Gibson's famous tolerance is often said to have initially drawn the Word of Blake refugees from the Constar Schism in 3052. However, the Word of Blake might have been more interested in Gibson's sizable armaments, armaments industry, which was a linchpin of the FWLM throughout the Succession Wars. Whatever the case, the Word of Blake proved poor guests to the most generous of hosts, soon seeking to impose Blake's teaching on peoples whose byword was live and let live. Since the jihad broke over the inner sphere, the word's hold on Gibson has only increased, to the consternation of most of the population. Blakist dominance is enforced by a number of shadow divisions that regularly rotate throughout the planet. So it is in that setting that we do this story, which is called Three Sides to Every Story. Word Against Blake. Pirate cast by Mariko Guardado. Unknown location. 13 August, 3072. This is Mariko Gordado, with the latest word against Blake. If you're receiving this private transmission, then you're receiving the truth, rather than the lies spun by word of Blake. For those of you new to WAB, but who might recognize me, I used to announce the game at Celestia's Coliseum in Solaris City. After the Blakists took over, I was coerced into remaining at the Coliseum, pretending to announce games that were yet another propaganda tool for the Blakists. But I was able to get away, and now I bring you these pirate casts to bring the truth. Today is the 13th of August, 3072, and we have good news from Gibson, thanks to a portable HPG on board one of the Regulan warships that has generously provided near real-time updates. The news? Not only has the Regulan force arrived, but it's met no resistance during the inward burn. Let me say that again. They met no resistance. Obviously, this proves what we've been saying all along, that Word of Blake's hold on Gibson is far weaker than they've tried to have us believe. But then, that's the standard for the Blakists. Their entire empire is built on propaganda. The problem with that is that once you start crying wolf, nobody believes you when the wolf is actually at the door, which means it's impossible to credit anything the Blakists say, and it's almost to the point where we have to assume the opposite of whatever nonsense they're spewing. In this instance, it's obvious that the tales of the impregnable Gibson are just another tired exaggeration from the Blakists. I hope to have another report before the day is out, one that will talk of a Gibson that is liberated from the yoke of Word of Blake. This is Mariko Guardado with Word Against Blake, reminding you to keep the truth burning bright. Hourly News with Bronwyn Smith. Portent, Gibson, 13 August, 3072. Greetings, noble followers of the Word of Blake. I am Bronwyn Smith with your hourly news bulletin. Regulan forces have engaged in a sneak attack on Gibson, 
Working with fifth columnists who have infiltrated our noble fighting forces on Gibson, the Hussars have made planetfall and are now shooting down civilians and innocents in their mad quest to remove this world from the St. and Blake's benevolent protection. Even now, their mechs are storming through Portent, destroying property and taking lives indiscriminately. The footage you are about to see was obtained from a heroic Blakist who sacrificed his life in order to provide us with these incredibly unpleasant images. We caution all younger viewers and any who are squeamish to turn away, as there is considerable violence here. Watch as the regular mech moves straight toward that private residence. Note that this is a house owned by a school teacher, Elsa Grinelli, as well as her young son, Nathan. Nathan is not home, as he is a dedicated Blakist fighting as a recruit in the 49th Shadow Division, who are even now among themselves arming themselves to prepare to repel this vicious onslaught. But what concerns us are the actions of the regular mech. Not content to invade our worlds and murder our noble soldiers. But here, the mech deliberately seeks out this one house, confirms that Ms. Grinelli is inside, and then destroys her home and kills her even as she pleads for her life. Rest assured that this vicious, unprovoked attack on one of our citizens will not go unpunished. The Regulans may think that they have the upper hand, but they have not reckoned with the word of Blake. I am Bronwyn Smith, and this has been your hourly news bulletin. Hail the sainted Blake. Excerpt from an after-action report by Sergeant Walter O'Reilly Maddox, 4th Regulan Hussars, 17 August, 3072. Intelligence reports had indicated that a supposed civilian named Elsa Grinelli had been feeding information about the Hussars to the Blakeys, thanks to a sophisticated comm network. While our own contact on the ground, a civilian who provided us with the intel we needed to land safely on Gibson, knew of no such fifth columnist working for the Blakeys, our spooks know their shit. So my mission during the invasion of Gibson was to find this Grinelli woman, destroy her comm network, and eliminate her as well. Upon achieving Planetfall, Corporal Backway was able to hack into the local address directory, and finding Grinelli's residence was a snap. I went to the location alone, figuring one mech could handle it. I was right in that. I confirmed that this was her house, that she was home, and that her house contained some impressive classified equipment that a schoolteacher on Gibson should never have access to, unless she was working with the Blakeys. The last thing she did before I took her down was ask me why I was doing this, as if the stupid bitch didn't know. Word Against Blake. Pirate cast by Mariko Guardado. Unknown location. 13 August, 3072. This is Mariko Guardado with the latest Word Against Blake. If you're receiving this pirate transmission, then you're receiving the truth rather than the lies spun by Word of Blake. It's still the 13th of August, 3072, and we've received word from the Hussars HPG that the Word of Blake is using their on-planet propaganda machine to try to paint the Reculins as monsters in an attempt to rally support to their lost cause of keeping Gibson as one of the worlds under their alleged protection. This time they're showing footage of a mech taking down what appears to be a civilian target, a woman they identify as a schoolteacher. While it's possible that Elsa Grinelli also teaches at a school, what she is truly is a high-ranking operative for Word of Blake. Based on telemetry we've received directly from the Hussars, Grinelli's home was filled with sophisticated computer equipment akin to that you'd find in an intelligence agency's secret sub-basement. In other words, once again, the propaganda machine is crying wolf. Elsa Grinelli is not a schoolteacher. She's an enemy agent as dangerous as any soldier in one of their shadow regiments. We'll be bringing you more on the retaking of Gibson soon. This is Mariko Gordado with Word Against Blake reminding you to keep the truth burning bright. Hourly News Bulletin with Bronwyn Smith, Portent, Gibson, 13 August, 3072. Greetings, noble followers of the Word of Blake. I am Bronwyn Smith with your Hourly News Bulletin. As promised, the latest on our troops' efforts to keep Gibson under the protection of Word of Blake, and those efforts have borne fruit, thanks to the arrival of the 52nd Shadow Division, led by the great Manet Domini himself, Precentor Apollyon. We just obtained this footage, and it shows the warriors of the 52nd emerging from the city of Portent as they engage the regular mercenaries and drive them away from our fair city. The Manet Domine's left fist is raised in defiance, reminding the Hussars that they are not welcome on worlds that fall under the protection of the sainted Blake. 
it should come as no surprise that presenter Apollyon has appeared as if from nowhere to ride to the rescue of the followers of the word. The Mane Domini has always been there to re rescue the downtrodden. When news of the death of the schoolteacher Elsa Grinelli reached his ears, he no doubt bent the laws of time and space itself in order to avenge her death. This is what the word of Blake's enemies never understand. When you live under the protection of the sainted Blake, all wrongs against you will be avenged. I am Bronwyn Smith, and this has been your hourly news bulletin. Hail the sainted Blake! Word Against Blake, pirate cast by Mariko Guardado, unknown location, 13 August, 3072. This is Mariko Guardado with the latest word against Blake. If you're receiving this pirate transmission, then you're receiving the truth rather than the lies spun by word of Blake. At the end of each of these casts, I remind people to keep the truth burning bright. It sounds easy, but it isn't. The truth isn't always pretty, and it isn't always pleasant. And to, today, my commitment to the truth forces me to say the Regulan forces that attempted to take Gibson from Word of Blake have failed. The people of Gibson, rather than being liberated from the Blakists, instead continue to be crushed under their iron fist. Blakist propaganda would, of course, have you believe that this was all ordained, especially since the tide of battle turned when the 52nd Shadow Division, led by the self-styled Mane Domini himself, presenter Apollyon, emerged from the buildings of Portent to rout the Hussars. The Blakists are still trying to sell the notion that Elsa Grinelli was an ordinary schoolteacher, and the death of that innocent woman brought Apollyon back to Gibson in a flash. The truth, of course, is, as I said, less pleasant. According to my sources, the 52nd super jumped back to Gibson for a refit following their prolonged fighting on Alphard. In other words, dumb luck. The refit wasn't scheduled, and had Apollyon gone elsewhere for the refit, or chosen not to engage in it at all, Gibson would no longer be a Blakist protectorate. That, my friends, is the truth. This is Marco Guardado with Word Against Blake, reminding you to keep the truth burning bright, no matter how hard that might be. Miko, that Word Against Blake bit you just recorded? What about it, Patricia? You can't send it out. What? Why not? Are you out of your mind? Do you know what idiots this makes the Hussars out to be? I don't give a flying fuck about the Hussars, Patricia. The only thing I care about is making Word of Blake look bad. As far as they're willing to admit, this was just a school teacher. And if I send this out, everyone will see them for being fools. Yeah, or maybe they, they know that Grinelli was the one feeding the Hussars the intel that got them on planet safely. Hell, they probably fed the intel to the Hussars that she was helping the weaves of Blake so that they'd do the dirty work of taking her out. And then they turned around and used her as a rallying cry. So? So, Miko, you're helping the Blakists by sending this out. It confirms that the en their enemies are incompetent morons who killed their own spies because they're too stupid to figure it out. That, plus being forced to retreat after they practically had the planet in their hands. I told you, Patricia, I don't care about making the Regulans look good. All that matters is, is getting your revenge. Yeah, I know. You're still pissed at them for fucking with your livelihood. But that wasn't what I was going to say, Patricia. Fine. What were you going to say? All that matters is the truth. I just spent my last cast talking about how the truth isn't pretty and it isn't pleasant. I can't just turn around and censor myself because the truth is inconvenient. The whole reason I started this was to counter the Blakist lies with the truth. Truth, huh? Like the truth that the Hussars were going to take Gibson? Like the truth that the Blakists hold on Gibson was weak? You said the Blakists are like the boy who cried wolf. You forgot one thing. The boy was right in the end. And so were the Blakists. Gibson was impregnable. What about Grinelli? What about her? Christ, Miko, isn't it better that she be remembered as a schoolteacher who was an innocent bystander in combat than as a woman who betrayed her own son and then was killed by incompetence? I, I, I don't know. Honestly, both options are pretty shitty. Right, so let it lie. Being dedicated to the truth is fine, but it doesn't mean you have to reveal everything. Let me think about it. Word Against Blake, pirate cast by Mariko Guardado, unknown location, 14 August, 3072. This is Mariko Guardado with the latest Word Against Blake. 
If you're receiving this pirate transmission, then you're receiving the truth rather than the lies spun by word of Blake. Today, I want to tell you about a woman named Elsa Grinelli. Uh, I believe this is still for sale. I don't know. Um, it's probably harder to find because it's 11 years old. Uh, and it's a big-ass expensive book. Um, yeah, it's a 60, there's a $60 cover price on this because it's a big, fancy book. But it's, it's, it might be available, and there should be versions of it available around. Uh, if you check out Catalyst Games Labs uh, online, they're the ones who uh, have both the Battletech and its uh, sequel, Mech Warrior. Uh, they're the ones who do those books and, and games and, and stuff, so uh, you can try and see if you can find that online. Uh, you can find me online at dekendido.net. Uh, you can read my blog at dekendido.wordpress.com. And you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash crad. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay safe.